Hey guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. And so, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the tropics update in terms of weather activity, and we're also going to be taking a look at an eclipse that is going to be happening tomorrow. So, I will be telling you all the information that you need to know, and stick around to find out if your era is going to be in the path of the eclipse. And so, before I go into details. <music> Alright, so first up, let's talk about the tropics. And so we're seeing here on the five day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center that there are no new tropical cyclones that are anticipated during the next couple of days. And so things have been pretty quiet. The last system that we've had was Tropical Storm Wanda and it was subtropical, so it didn't directly affect anywhere and bring disastrous impacts as it was a subtropical or tropical storm out there in the Atlantic. And so since Wanda, we have not had any other system develop or even any disturbances as well for that matter. So things are pretty quiet now and are likely to remain so as this hurricane season comes to a close in several days. And so let's take a look at the general view of the Atlantic Basin. All right, and we're seeing here on satellite that we really don't have a whole lot going on. So we do have that trough associated with some convection that is currently located over the easternmost and northwestern portion of the Caribbean. So this is likely bringing potentially showers and thunderstorms to portions of Cuba and maybe even Florida. So if you're in any of those regions, you're probably experiencing some inclement weather as a result of this system here but we do see that uh, some of the areas that have deep convection are not affecting any land areas but this is going to be lingering around for a little while as time goes by and so next let's take a look at the caribbean so we don't have much going on just some clouds here and there that might come with little showers now and then but nothing major at this time so overall things are expected to be pretty quiet we're not expecting any severe weather activities during the next couple of days or weeks as a matter of fact so we can call it that the hurricane season is ended because we're not seeing the potential for any more storms during the next couple of days to weeks and the season officially concludes on the 30th of November all right and so now let's go ahead and take a look at this higher dust map and so we're seeing here that uh, we have the different colors that indicate how dense the dust is and so we have the light yellow shade that indicates that it is not a whole lot of dust not very dense but as we head to the dark orange the red that indicates that we have denser amounts of dust in the atmosphere and when we have a lot of dust extended across a particular region it usually results in limited rainfall activity and the reason for that is because in order for us to have a lot of showers and thunderstorms we need moisture but the dry air inhibits moisture and so without that uh, there will be less rainfall in a particular region so we see that portions of the Caribbean and even out in the main development region we have all of that dry air extended so Generally, a lot of showers and thunderstorms are not anticipated as of now, but as we're going to be heading into the end of this month, going into December and January, we'll have quite a bit of cold fronts making their way down from the US, and this is going to be influencing the weather for the Caribbean as it is going to be resulting in inclement weather at times. Sometimes the weather can get very, very intense, but as of right now, we're not having any significant threats. Alright, so now in terms of that partial lunar eclipse that is going to be happening tomorrow. So first, let us look at what exactly is the partial lunar eclipse. So, with a normal lunar eclipse, which is generally a total lunar eclipse, what happens is that the Earth passes directly between the Sun and the Moon and casts its shadow on the Moon. And there are two shadows. We have the Umbra and the penumbra and so when the moon is in the umbral shadow of the earth that is when we have a total lunar eclipse and the portion of the earth that is experiencing night at that time is going to witness that eclipse but a partial eclipse is when a portion of the umbra covers majority of the moon and so that is when we would see a partial lunar eclipse. In this case, that is what is going to be taking place tomorrow. And so we won't have that full coverage where we would see that darkened and blood moon out in the 
early morning hours because of course the moon is not fully uh, shadowed by the umbra of earth so where is going to be witnessing this eclipse so this eclipse is going to be visible in portions of europe asia North America, South America, and Australia. And so let us take a look at the eclipse map. And so we're seeing that all these areas that are in that very pale red shade, those are the areas that are going to be experiencing or witnessing rather the eclipse. And so we're seeing here that we have, as I said, portions of Asia, Australia, uh, the entire North America, South America, the entire Caribbean, as well as Greenland and Iceland, and even portions of westernmost Africa could witness an eclipse as well. And so the eclipse is going to be happening tomorrow for the Western Hemisphere in the early morning hours. So specifically for Jamaica, the peak is going to be around 4 a.m. So that is the best time to go out and observe the eclipse. We're going to start to see that reddish hue, but it's not going to be fully darkened because again it is a partial lunar eclipse and so the duration of the eclipse is going to be around five and a half hours and so the partial eclipse is going to begin at around 2 18 in the morning and so that is where we're going to start to see the moon go out and as it fades we're going to start to see that red hue to by 4 a.m that is the maximum eclipse and that is when the moon is going to be closest to the center of Earth's shadow. And so this is going to be a definite treat for the eye as you're going to be ending this week. And it is going to be the last eclipse of 2021. So it is definitely something that you shouldn't miss. Again, the areas that are going to be witnessing the eclipse, North and South America, Europe, Asia, Australia, and everywhere that lies in between for those areas, guys. So set your alarms for tomorrow morning and enjoy enjoy this wonderful natural phenomenon. And so you might be wondering, when are we actually going to have a total lunar eclipse, and specifically for the Western Hemisphere? Well, I am pleased to say that this eclipse is going to be happening next year on my birthday. So May 15th to May 16, 2022 is when there will be a total lunar eclipse. And this is going to be visible in portions of North and South America, the entire Caribbean and portions of the Antarctic as well. And other areas are likely to witness a partial eclipse where the moon is not fully shadowed by Earth. So more information will be passed down to you at that time. I will definitely make a video before the eclipse and I will share all the information that you need to know. And so guys, that is really it for this video. And so if you found it to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best instance I can. And just remember to always be with the wise.